it's no discredit to Ballyno, the hamlet itself, to say that there isn't much to it. So why the Belfast and County Down Railway built such an extensive station here is a bit of a mystery that I'll attempt to answer in a minute or so. And the station's relative obscurity is reflected by the fact that this is my first video with no contemporary photos. I wasn't able to find any at all, not in the newspaper archive and not even from the owners. So if anyone watching knows of any, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to see them. When the station was operational, the trains crossed the Ballyno Road to reach the station through a level crossing with two sets of double gates. And this was the level crossing keeper's cottage. At Ballyno, at least latterly, it fell to the station master's wife to man the gates, arising in the early morning to let the first train into the station and staying on duty till late at night. It's been uninhabited since the mid 80s and even then would have been something of a time capsule with a range, a Belfast sink and perhaps best of all, this old milk bottle, all still in situ. Dating from 1892, the station building is very like that of Art Glass, two stations away, designed by the BCDR's chief engineer, George Culverwell, and his assistant, a Mr. Morris. But where Art Glass lies in ruins, this is much more befitting a piece of the country's built heritage. Much like Clock, one station away, the last station master bought the house from the Ulster Transport Authority when the line closed and it's been in the family ever since. It was sympathetically extended by the current owner's father, although the platforms have been largely dismantled and the track bed filled in. The signal cabin here is one of only three left that I can think of on the old BCDR network, the others being at Tullymurray and at Saintfield. There was one at Killock until about three years ago, but sadly it fell victim to rot, as it was entirely made of wood, unlike the others. And sadly, as with all of them except Saintfield, the original signal levers and mechanisms were removed in the 1950s. And although today its dilapidated state gives it a certain charm, Let's hope it doesn't get too much worse, as it is a rarity. Identical to those at Clock and Art Glass, the good shed was served by its own set of rails that ran right through the shed and connected with the passenger line at either end. And the two main commodities that were shipped from here were potatoes, funnily enough, and sand from nearby Torella Beach for the war effort, which apparently wasn't of the best quality, but war being what it is, the authorities had to take it. And the cattle beach, that's the area where any livestock was kept awaiting transport, was just behind this. And adjoining the good shed is the art glass bound waiting room, complete with some of its original roof edging. It's now in use as a library. As well as my old favourite, reused rails, there's another rarity. This post would have once supported the station's name board and is, to my mind, the only one left on the entire BCDR network. So we haven't quite explored why a tiny hamlet like Ballyneau would deserve such an extensive station complex and the clue may lie a couple of hundred metres west of the station. The Stonehenge of Ireland dates back to Neolithic times and affords a superb view of the Mourns. Historians still don't know entirely what it is or why it's there, but human remains were excavated here, so the likelihood is that it's a grand burial site for some ancient figure important enough to deserve such treatment. And come the 1890s, the BCDR company were obviously trying to maximise the profitability of their new branch to Art Glass, which was being built anyway, and decided that serving this site of historic significance might increase traffic from day trippers. And it's easy to laugh at how little people in the 1890s must have had to do, but even on filming day, there were more people than I expected, so maybe the railway chiefs were onto something. Anyway, that's enough for another video. My sincere thanks to the owners of Ballyno Station for giving me permission to film and to meet their dog. 
I've now covered the three main stations on the old Ardglass branch with varying degrees of competence, so my next trip will probably take me towards Newcastle and Dundrum. Probably. As ever, please like, comment and most importantly subscribe, and over 200 of you have now done so, which I find rather incredible, so thank you. And wherever I end up, I'll see you the next time.